essentially, when you set a column as auto increment, MySQL will be automatically creating the unique ID whenever a record is saved. So you don't have to create it yourself. Again, this is probably very confusing, but once we actually start using you, you're going to see what I mean, and uh, it will become very clear then. So I'm just going to save those changes. And once again, we get a message from PHP MindMin. Table people has been altered. We've altered it by adding, by changing the uh, ID field and giving it an extra capability, auto increment. Essentially, MySQL will automatically create the unique ID for us so we don't have to do it. And if you see up here, the SQL query, it's this is actual SQL code. And you can see it's very human readable. It says alter table, right? That's the command. We're altering the table. And we're altering the table called people. And it says change ID, ID int to these values here. So again, we'll get into this later on. But as you can see, SQL, once again, it's very human readable for the most part. Okay, we're getting there. We're almost ready to actually jump into some PHP. So one thing I want to do is let's browse the table. So I hit the Browse tab here. And again, our message, MySQL return an empty result set, zero roles. That means, and you see the query, select star from people. Now, star is basically uh, a wild card. If you remember when you do, if you if you recall when you do star searches, it basically select anything. And we're saying from where? From the table people. So limit 0 30 means bring back record 0 to 30. Uh, nothing higher. So again, we'll get into this a little bit later. So what we need to do now is actually insert some data into this table so that PHP has something to work with. So we go into the SQL tab. And you see here's a, uh, a basic SQL query. But what I want to do is I'm going to delete that and I'm going to cut and paste something in here. This is some brand new SQL we haven't seen before. And this is called the insert command. It's called the insert command because it says it's, well, because it's called, it inserts data into the table. So it goes insert into. So that's the basic command. And this is the table, right? People. Insert into people. Our table people here. And and you put little brackets here and you say, where do you want to insert? What fields? Remember we had our name field? So I would say insert into the table people in the name field this value. So here we have the via Safan. So let me just hit go and hopefully that will insert that value into the P into the people table. So hit go. So we have our message again, insert a rows one, insert a row idea one. So here's the actual query. So let's actually browse our database, see what happens now. So we see that showing rows zero of zero query, you know, Dell says how long the query has taken here and so on. One thing I want to point out, you notice it says showing row zero zero. It doesn't say empty. That means it actually turned a, a record. So why is it saying zero? The reason is like PHP, MySQL starts counting at zero. So zero is your first record, one is your second record, three is excuse me, two is your third record, and so on. Just like MySQL arrays, excuse me, PHP arrays. Now if you look down here, you see the actual data return. You see name and ID. You see ID one that was automatically created by MySQL because we use the auto increment. If you recall before when we created our table, we used auto increment here. So that automatically created that one for us. I go browse, right? One. So let's actually uh, insert another record into our table and see this increase. So we're going to go. Uh, SQL, cut and paste again, paste. This time I'm going to put uh, Nick. So I'll just hit go. So again, again, insert into table people. We're going to, we're going to, we want to insert data into the name column or the name field. And the value we want to insert is Nick. So we hit go. Insert rows one, insert row ID two. And then it tells us how fast this query took. And it shows us the SQL again. So let's go back to browse again. And here now we're showing rows 0 to 1. See, because we've added an extra record. If we scroll down, now we have two rows, right? 
We have Stefan was the first one. We have Nick the second. You notice how the ID was incremented here? And you notice how in both instances, when we created our query, we did not actually tell it to increment the ID. MySQL took care of that for us, again, because of the auto increment extra that we added here. Kind of cool. Now that we have a database created inside of our, yeah, we have a database created inside of MySQL server, the database is killer. And we've actually created a table inside of killer. And the table is called people. And we've actually added some information into people. If we go into, uh, so it's, excuse me, database killer, SQL, we could run a query here, but, but uh, we'll leave it, we'll leave it for now. So we, we're inside of killer, we have killer, and we're ready to go as far as uh, PHP is concerned. One last thing we need to do though is this that we go back to server host. So if you're inside of killer, excuse me, you go to server localhost, click that, and we get the front page of PHP mine min again. We need to know the user, as in the username to access the database. So if you go into privileges, and you notice here, we have only one user, root, and it's got no password. We could actually change that. We could give the root user a password. And if you notice down here, we're getting a warning error that maybe we should do that. But since this is running on our local computer, we don't need to do this. When you're actually going to a hosting account and you're using their MySQL, they're gonna set up a lot of this stuff for you. And I have another video where I show you how to use cPanel to create databases with MySQL and PHP Mind Min. That will have to leave to, again to that other video. But for now, since I assume you're using MAMP or WAMP or XAMPP on your local machine, we just gonna, I just wanted to point out where you're gonna use the root user and we're not gonna need a password. And this root user, Global Privileges, has all privileges. What that means is that this guy is like a super user. He could do anything. 